Okay, in this short video, I just want to give you a very brief overview of the different parts of the program. We're going to dive into them much more in depth as we go on. But uh, I just want to break down the different areas of what you see when you look at the program. For somebody who's completely new to SoundMinor, this might be useful. If you've used SoundMinor for quite a while, this is probably something you could skip over. So SoundMinor itself is broken down into some various parts. There's really four main parts of the window when you start the program. You have in the middle here what we call the search results or the record results. That's what I call them anyway. I'm not sure what SoundMinor would call it. But this is where you'll see all of the sounds that you have loaded into your database. And the bottom is the waveform browser. So as I click a different sound here, you'll see it load into the bottom portion. And this is where I can play the sound. I could make a selection. I can do various things. And we'll dive into every aspect of this in another video that covers just all the functionality that you can do in the waveform browser. There's a left panel and a right panel of SoundMiner as well. And they do slightly different things. They have different functions. The left panel is called the linked filter search, and it's a way to help find sounds. We'll go into that much more in depth. It also has the ability to save some searches. It has a playlist function. The right panel has three sort of different modes. It has the metadata mode, which shows you very specific information about the file that you're selected on. This is configurable to some degree. We'll look at this more. The summary, which works similar to the left linked filter search, but is a little bit different. You can call up certain things like library or microphone if there was, things like that, and you can search. And there's an artwork window, which calls up the artwork associated with all the files in the library. So in this case, here, here is all the artwork for all the files that have loaded into this database. Again, we're going to go into much more detail on these panels, but notice right away that you can hide them if you want. You can click on them and basically hide them away. And this is normally the mode that I work in for the most part because I want to see as much of the text information on the screen as I can. The Waveform browser is also resizable, so you can click and drag it up and down to maximize the real estate for whichever part you want to focus on. There's a toolbar here as well, and this is customizable, so you'll be able to add icons to this for the things you use the most or remove the ones that you don't. This is the default set that comes up when I start a brand new instance of SoundMiner. We'll go into much more on how to organize this later, but notice that you can click and drag to reorder the columns. You can resize the columns. You can also store layouts, which we're going to go into a whole video on that. But if I move these around, I can store different layouts so I can toggle between them. So as you build out different layouts of what information you want to see, you can store them. To find something, I can just come up here and search. And I can search, for example, radio. And I'll find a bunch of records that match that. I can search for multiple things, so radio hiss and I find a record that matches that. I can reselect all the records. I can play records. I can make selections. I can select multiple records. And you notice that right now, when I play a sound, SoundMiner is changing the color of that record. This is an option to visualize the play history. We'll go through that and talk about that more in the future as well. This is the main part of SoundMiner. There are a whole lot of other windows that you can call up that do various things. And we're going to go through all of these in time with different videos. Some of them, such as the spotting panel, are quite complex and need uh, a longer video to talk about. But these are the main parts of the SoundMiner window. So again, the record results, the left and the right panels, which are hideable, and the waveform browser. So these are the four parts you're going to interact with 90% of the time, I would say in SoundMiner. So in the next video, I want to talk really quickly about auditioning, how to listen to sounds out of SoundMiner, because there are sort of two options, using the built-in output of your device, your computer, or using Rewire. And it sometimes confuses people, sometimes confuses me. So I wanted to make a quick video discussing just how to audition sounds from SoundMiner. We'll do that next.